So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So this one's gonna be about 24 books recommended by TED speakers. Which is amazing, which is totally amazing. Uh, with that being said, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics fucking podcast. And I'm pretty fucking pumped to be here. And yeah, and I'm also pumped to go through this certain article. I've actually been gone through a bit of it already uh, in one of the episodes where I just finished. I think it was the last episode where I was initially talking about um, another ideas.ted.com article, which was all about connecting, uh, connecting to nature and having a better connection to nature and all those things, um, which was also a great article. I think all of them are great. The question is more like, okay, you know, if you can actually use the knowledge you've gotten out of this article um, in terms of the um, connecting with nature article or whatever it was actually called, well, you know, it was quite difficult, I would say, because the knowledge there for sure is good, but, you know, there might be some things that you've already known, and there might also be some things that you just do not need and or are obvious, but still, it was a great article. Um, nevertheless, or anyways, actually, I'm, I'm really trying hard to not say am all the fucking time, but I think it comes with practice, which is actually something that... Uh, something that Seth Godin was talking about in one of his Akimbo podcast episodes quite lately. So I've been, been, well, I think, I don't know if it was a late or just a recent episode, but I've been listening to it pretty recently. So just today, while I was just working, I think, on the posts or something else, I do just like to have something to listen to, you know, whether it is music or whether it is actually podcasts. I tend to actually prefer the podcast because... Well, you know, music is, is good. I do not want to kind of just debate about that. But for sure, you know, through podcasts, like, you know, at least at my point of view or for myself, I get more knowledge and more value out of podcasts than I get out of music, you know. Besides the whole fact that you get more creative through music or whatever, this could actually be a thing. I do just get more knowledge and more valuable content and information out of podcasts than I do from music. But yeah. So we are going through the article, the short list, 24 books, each under 200 pages, which is amazing for all those people that do not have much time, you know, which seems actually to, actually to be the case for everyone, as recommended by TED Speakers from July the 3rd, 2019. And the small little picture you see there is actually from iStock. It is not from an artist, unfortunately, it is from iStock. Um, what I know is that I've gone through graphic novels already and these were quite great even though like Batman year one which you can see there I hope at least wasn't so good like I think it originally wasn't actually some some graphic novel it was actually some some comic book if I remember correctly and Batman is just well it was actually initially not quite uh, sure that he would be in this book or in this novel actually so he actually got added or something. So, you know, in the end, he is there. He is in the book. He is in the novel. It is good. You know, I think it's actually the first ever book or comic or novel Batman is in, which is also something. Um, some of you might just ask yourself, why am I actually going through such an article without any information? Um, well, I don't know. I do think that this could give you some value, you know, if you're just on the search for, for something to read, something small to read, something that is recommended by good people or by, well, um, by, by people that have done something in the past or that are just, you know, successful or whatsoever. Um, Bill Gates, for example, has also just some list of, of his favorite books or some books that he also recommends on gate, gatesnotes.com or something. Should be, I guess. I could show you afterwards if we do just have some time left. But... But yeah, you know, I think a lot of people just recommend books, but I do think, you know, these seem to be books that are not just so kind of trendy, not so, uh, yeah, like trendy, I would say. So yeah, um, so time is precious, we know. So here are compiled 
Here, compiled from past reading lists, are suggestions for two dozen, two dozen short by short but mighty books to pick up. Uh, the first section is section is going to be about fiction and literature, and uh, all the books are actually kind of sorted into these sections. I think, well, shores, you know, I would say, but, but yeah, you know, it is definitely shores. Not quite always. Sometimes it is just just uh, a way to sort them. It is actually pretty tough to always focus on not saying am and other shitty words. <laughs> um, again. But yeah, you know, it actually just really comes to my mind or I just really recognize it when I'm editing some some videos and or some podcast episodes. Then I really see, okay, I'm saying a lot of am and I'm saying a lot of just and, you know, and all these things, which is not bad. Like, you know, I'm, yeah, I am going to, to somehow... Uh, manage it, I guess, to some sort, or something, I don't know, never mind, I think I'll just go ahead with the reading. So, fiction and literature, the first one is The Summer Book by Tove Jensen, the quintessential, pretty tough word, <laughs> so the quintessential celebration of summer in Scandinavia, 22, vin I don't actually know how it is pronounced, Vinjets? Is it Vinjets or Vignettes? Vinjets? Let's see. If there's actually some suggestion. Uh, I don't fucking know. So Vinjets of a girl and a grandmother on an island. Jensen is best known as the creator of Moomin and his and this book and this book is my quite curious and simple favorite. So this quote or this saying is from Linda Luikis. Luikas or whatsoever, and from the TED Talk, a delightful way to teach kids about computers. So it seems somehow to be a book on computers. It's called The Summer Book by Tove Jensen. The, Ve the Vegetarian by Yan Kan, or Hen Ken, or whatsoever. Uh, this is the first full-length novel by South Korean uh, literary star Kang, to be made available in English. It tells the story of a woman who suddenly stops eating meat, a shock decision that fractures a family relationship, allowing glimpses of allowing glimpses of the traumas, assumptions and impossible dreams that lie beneath. The writing is stunning, poetic, alluring, troubling and strange, and the drama keeps you turning the pages to the end. It is fabulous. This quote or this saying is by Anne Morgan. And from the TED Talk, my year reading a book from every country in the world, which seems to be good. But by the way, you know, before anybody gets anything wrong, I don't just have to, to say something, I have to just admit something, to point out something. I don't believe in books. Even though I believe in books. I do just want to say that, you know, books are just something, books are something that is not for everyone clearly and, and actually obviously, but knowledge and information and the willingness to gain information, that, that is something for everyone. You know, everyone somehow wants to, to get knowledge, wants to somehow absorb knowledge, but I do not want to say that books are the best way, you know, and I do not want to say that books are the best way to do anything. Like, you know, for entertainment, they might be just pretty good. Watching TV or watching Netflix or watching some movies might also be pretty good. It always comes up to you. You know, some people just learn through books pretty easily. And there are some people learn through non-fictional, better from fictional, better than from fictional. And some people are just the opposite and learn better from fictional books than from non-fiction. As um, Bill Gates actually is, he said, which was actually something that I was quite then thinking about, like, okay, you know, this is interesting. He said that he learns more from fictional books than from non-fiction books. And I'm always like, you know, I do not want to read non-fiction. I do not want to read fiction because I always kind of have the belief that I do just need to, to read fiction, uh, non-fiction, I'm sorry. That I do just need to, to, to read non-fiction because the fiction is only about some, some fiction and shit and I can't learn anything from that and whatsoever. And I do just want to have, like... This is a rule, this is a tip, this is information, and this is knowledge, and here, and here you have it. With fictional books, it's, I guess, more like, okay, you know, this is some story, 
and there you can learn something. But what you're learning there is just totally, it totally comes up to you, you know, whether you see it or not, whether you have distilled it or not, whether you get it or not. Even though, you know, some books might be just very obvious or might be written pretty obviously so that everybody gets it, I still think and believe and actually also hope that there are actually some books that, well, um, yeah, the story of the book or actually the plot of the book is not so obvious. And I do think, you know, this also just makes a book somehow good if you do just somehow, well, experience the book rather than just consuming it. But yeah, you know, it really comes up to you, you know, what medium you're using, what source you're using, whether you're using books, courses, videos on YouTube, there are so many ways. Something to be said is that books totally cost something, you know, and actually just downloading downloading, downloading books for free for your Kindle or some, some PDF kind of shit, it is not good. It really is not, you know, the authors just put a lot of work into their books, it is, at my point of view, and I've done it myself, it is not okay to download books for free. You know, um, well, you know, I've still watched some movies illegally, just some, through some, some streaming shit. It is not okay, to be honest, as well. You know, to really be honest, it is not okay as well, because, well, like, yeah, you know, the the all the people that are staring in the movie, you know, and all the people that actually made the movie, whether it be the director or some guy that actually only had to to direct the light at certain people or something, you know, they all have worked on this certain thing. And, and I guess just getting it for free, well, it is really not good. Like, you know, nobody of us, nobody of us who is actually consuming those things would actually like to have it the same way, you know. If you would be an author, Maybe you are an author, which would be interesting. If you're an author, just put it down into the comments. It would be just very interesting for me. Um, just to see who you are and who is actually watching my shit, who is actually listening to my shit. And if you're listening, totally just hit me up on, on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter or on Tumblr or per email or via email, actually. Everything is okay. You know, you can totally hit me up. It would just actually be very nice to just hear something from anyone that is listening and or watching and or doing something with what I put out there. Um, but yeah, you know, if you would be an author or a director or something like this, I think you would also not just like it pretty much if somebody's consuming your shit without paying for it or without giving you back something, especially if you just put a lot of money and effort and then everything you're having into this particular thing. I guess it is just not... It's just not nice. It's just not good. It's just not as good as just getting something for the hard work you did. Even though I'd also have to say that some people or some some directors do just not make it for the money. You know, they're not producing videos. Well, also videos, but but movies and um, series for money. And you know, they just do it because they like it. It's their dream. It is their passion. It's what they just love to do. And I really hope that more people are doing things in this kind of manner because I guess it makes you happy. You know, if you're only doing some things because it is fun. You know, for sure you do just have to live and you do just have the money. You do just, you do just have to have money to live and whatsoever. For sure. Like, I'm not debating about that. It's important. But yeah. Late frame. Late fame. Not late frame. Late fame by Arthur <laughs> Schnitzler. Um, sorry that I'm laughing there, but you know, you know schnitzel, which is actually this, you know, meat, which is deep fried basically in the end, which is pretty typical for, for Austria and the Germany. Yeah, maybe you know it, maybe you don't know it. I'm going to show you. You know what? I am going to show you what a schnitzel is. If you didn't know or if you don't know. Schnitzel. Can I have just some pictures? Thanks. So here you have, just wait a second. <laughs> I never thought that I would actually show some schnitzels around. <laughs> um, yeah, the Wiener Schnitzel. Or Vienna Schnitzel, actually. So yeah, here are some schnitzels. They all look, you know, I'm not eating schnitzels. I think the last time where I've eaten a schnitzel was probably. 
I don't know, three years ago, two years ago. It's just, you know, it has been some time until then. But, or, yeah, you know what I mean. Late Night Fame by Arthur Schnitzler. This book, which was re, re uh, rescued from obscurity, or obscurity, obscurity, um, through a wonderful new translation, is a funny, tragic novel, or novella. Is a novella like a small novel? A tragic novella on the corruption influence of sudden and unexpected fame from Daniel Suskind. You know, this is actually the, the man, I guess, I assume, um, the saying is from. And the TED Talk would have been three myths about the future of work and why they are not true. So it's actually, you know, I just thought until now um, that these TED Talks are actually somehow correlated to the book. But they are not, you know, they are simply correlated to the person that is actually saying or suggesting, suggesting or recommending the book. You know, it might have been very obvious for everybody, but not me, but never mind. Never mind. It is what it is. It is okay. And I'm just gonna take a sip. A really tiny fucking sip. Um, it really reminds me on the Picasso, yeah, it was Picasso, the Picasso article that I've been gone through from James Clear, um, which was also about, okay, how fame can also be bad and the downsides of fame and the downsides of being talented, which was actually the case in the end for Picasso, because, you know, for him it was like he's a very talented and very good and or was not entrepreneur, but also, I think, salesperson and definitely artist. Because, you know, I guess, if I remember correctly, his net worth in the end was 500 million, which is a fucking load. You know, it really is a lot. It just is insane. You know, there are so many business people producing content on YouTube. You know, you, you know them, people know them, that are not having the same amount of net worth as he was having as an artist, if I remember correctly. I hope that I'm not saying some wrong shit there. But I guess, yeah, it was five hundred million dollars at the time of at the time of his death. By the way, I don't actually know how to calculate your net worth, but it is a fucking load. It is so insane for an artist, especially for an artist. You know, even though you can be like, okay, you know, for an artist, it is just kind of normal if you think about the artworks that they are actually selling. You know, which could or can definitely be like one hundred million fucking dollar artworks which is just insane but for all the people that 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 like art that like having something in in your house like this okay you know i'm I'm not judging if you have the money if it is your money if you do not just uh yeah put yourself into just a really bad spot i guess it's totally fine it's totally good the next one is um Frankenstein, or Frankenstein, or Frankenstein, or Frankenstein, whatever it is, by Mary Shelley. I was recently drawn again to this masterpiece because I study how microscopic organisms live and behave and how to alter their genes in environments so they can be used as cellular factories and environmental sen- sentinels. Shelley explores the moral and uh, so societal dilemmas of scientific exploration and the ethics and responsibilities that stem from it. It's a must read. From Simon Bianco and the TED Talk with Tom Zimmerman or Zimmerman or Zimmerman, whatever, the wonderful world of life in a drop of water. Multiple choice by, I guess it's Alejandro Sambra. I, I totally think that it is Alejandro. You know, I'm, I'm spelling it. So A-L-E-J-A-N-D-R-O and Sambra with Z-A-M-B-R-A. This seriously playful book by one of the brightest young stars in the Latin American literally firmament defies categorization. Defies car- categorization. It calls on the reader to make parts of its narrative disappear. The book subtly alludes to the blight of the disappeared. For example, Chilins or Chilens from from Chile, of course. Yeah, Chilens, who did not fit with the state's narrative under Pinochet, Pinochet, 
Pinochet, I assume. But it also invites us to ask who is shaping the narratives of our of our own time and place. As a potent indictment of the multiple choice test, the book will also appeal to students still smarting from poor grades in end of year exams. <laughs> well, yeah. So multiple choice by Alejandro Sambra. It actually sounds pretty interesting. And I've always liked those books where you do just can make decisions like serious seem to, to happen or seem to be made as well. Like I think it's Black Mirror one of them. I don't know. Like I'm not watching any series. Nothing. Really nothing. I have. It is not something for me. It is not something that I do. I would rather watch YouTube videos. And I'm doing this. You know, I'm taking my time after I've done everything that I wanted to do, after I've done everything that I should be doing, I take my time to actually watch some YouTube videos. Just because I want to do it, just because that is, this is what I like to do. And yeah, and I, I'm doing it. And I think I shouldn't, you know, you can also watch some, some series. You can also just watch some movies every single day for five hours. But the thing is, if you're then complaining about your life, you should definitely change something up. You know, I think it, it is always the case and it should always be the thing that, okay, you know, if you're just not happy with what your life is like at the time or with some things in your life, you know, whether it be some situation in your life, some people in your life, no matter what it be, you should totally change it up. If it is just really fucking with you, if it's just really something that you do not like or something that you do just want to change up, you should to totally then also change it up. But um, if everything is okay, I do just need your, as Gary would say, um, escapism, which is, well, I do understand it, you know, the whole escapism thing, it is totally the case, you know, why are we watching just some Instagram videos, because we want to escape from reality, sub sub subconsciously or consciously, I think we're just doing it. it, it makes sense to me, at least. Why are we watching YouTube videos? Why are we watching some series? Why are we just doing this and that, playing games, whatsoever? Even though the whole playing games thing, I think it's a little bit fucked up because playing games is actually one of the things that has always been the case for everyone. You know, since we've been just very little children, I guess we've also been always, I'm always mixing them up. I'm always mixing them up, those two words. Um, you've always been playing some games, you know, whether it would have been with your just siblings, whether it was you playing the ball or with the ball or some other shit, you know, I guess we have always been playing games. Something that I read somewhere. I don't know where, I don't remember, I'm sorry. Um, but it seems actually to be the case. And actually just, well, going so against games, you know, whether it be video games, I think most of the time it is totally video games because board games, nobody says something against board games, you know. I assume, you know, there might be some, some parents that actually have something against board games as well as against video games just because it seems to be a waste of time, even though chess is pretty fucking difficult, you know, to understand, well, not to understand the game, but to be good in the game, you know, it just really takes a, long, a lot of time, a lot of thinking capabilities, a lot of, um, I do not want to say intelligence, because I assume something that really hit me that I've read yesterday from, uh, or I've heard yesterday from Seth Godin again, and he just really inspired me. He has been inspiring me for the last five days or something. It really is amazing. You know, you should totally listen to his podcast, Akimbo. It is amazing. Just amazing. Um, but he said that if you have straight A's in school, it just means that you have straight A's in school and nothing more. It is not more about that. The problem that he saw there is that after school, which is just definitely a just time span that you can somehow predict, that you know, okay, you will be out of school someday, then uh, the whole kind of just narrative, I guess, somehow, that you've just had around your character, around yourself, as, as being good in school and so on, is just gone. You know, because you're not in school any longer. And now and then you do just have to be good at something else. Um, I do just also have to say that, okay, being good in school doesn't only maybe mean that you're just good in school. Even though, you know, I do just have to say, you know, when you're good in school, it definitely also comes up to what I've been talking about before. 
how you can learn or how you do learn. You know, some learn by books, some learn by osmosis, some learn by watching other people doing it, which is actually osmosis. And some other people just, well, uh, listen to audiobooks. And some people do need some teacher that is teaching them something, that is just talking about this thing, um, when they also can just, you know, ask questions and whatsoever. They just need this. You know, everyone needs something different. Theoretically, you know, there's going to be just a group of people who just need the same thing, of course, but you know what I mean. And um, some people are just good in school system because of the fact that they can learn well through school. Or they're just good in school. They just know, they just have figured the system out. I guess they have just figured the fucking system of school out. You know, that it always depends on the country as well because school systems are different in, in every country well theoretically as well <laughs> but yeah like like yeah you know being good in school can mean something i do not want to just you know well you know i really do not want to say that okay if you're good in school yeah you're just totally shit but you're just good in school um probabilities that there and chances that that you're also just good at the topic or you just like the topic or you're passionate about the topic or whatsoever and therefore you're also good in the topic or what the topic is all about um but yeah in the end it also doesn't mean okay only if only because you've been good in school doesn't mean that you will be good in university probabilities are quite high because similarities are there i guess i assume at least in my country but um does it mean that you're good in real life and well real life or just in in the economy doing your shit and whatsoever i wouldn't particularly say so because school of course is something different than just being in the economy and just trying to sustain yourself somehow i assume should i actually now start even though i would like to i would really like to go through a little bit more because i haven't I have done something, I haven't done much. For 30 minutes, I guess it is nothing, but it is okay. I would actually like to go through a bit of the history and science thing, or novels or books. Yeah. Um, A, which is A-A-A-A-W, to Z, The Words of Birds, North America, Britain and Northern Europe, by John Bevis, or Beavis. This book is both an enormous joke <laughs> and a real art piece. This dictionary of bird sounds and men men I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is spelled M N, which is the hardest part of it, E M O N I C S. And memnomics, or whatever it is, whatever it actually is, um, it is the study of development of systems for improving and assisting the memory. I've been just hearing something about it. I've been just reading something about it. I do not know where, but I have. Will make you sensitive to the funny paradox of transcribing the amazing variety of bird sounds into human words and to the limitation of verbal elements in animal and human voices. From Rebecca Kleinberger. And the TED talk was, why you don't like the sound of your own voice. Do I? It's actually something that I've been thinking about as well, you know, but I guess it has something to do with acceptance as well, you know, uh, because I do fairly have a bright voice, a high voice, I can go pretty high, I can, and I, I sometimes I'm actually deep, you know, when I'm talking in English, which is the funny thing, most of the time I'm pretty low, actually, well, not always, I'm, I'm sometimes low, but actually in German, I'm, I'm most often I'm pretty high, you know, especially when I'm just greeting someone, you know, if I'm just going out of my house or my flat or something and I'm encountering some neighbor of mine, I was, I was, I will always going to be just so fucking bright and I don't know why, you know, some of that I've just seen as well, but no matter what voice you have, I think it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful one for someone on this fucking planet, we're 7.7 .7 million, a uh, billion, uh, mathematic Mathematicians uh, Apology by G. H. Hardy. This is the best book I know about the sheer beauty of mathematics. Here is one lovely quote from the book. A math is it mathematician? I yeah, I, I guess it is. A mathematician, like a painter or a poet, is a maker of patterns. 
If his patterns are more permanent than theirs, it is because they are made with ideas. Apart from the his, I. Apart from the his, I say yes, indeed. So if his patterns are more permanent than theirs, it is because they are made with ideas. Well, you know, I think painters do actually have a lot of fucking ideas. And I know it by myself. You know, you know when I'm designing something, most often I'm just thinking about so many fucking things. I'm trying to implement it into the final artwork. For the presentation in the end, I do not actually know what I've been thinking about during the process. This is the whole kind of pity about it. This is the whole fucked up shit about it. I don't know, you know, what I've been thinking while I was doing it. But I've just been thinking about so many different things. This is what I know. Uh, for sure, mathematicians are thinking about these things in a different way, I guess. But it sounds to be, uh, or it sounds a little... Uh, triggering for me at least <laughs> for me as an artist yeah i think i would consider myself an artist to some degree especially also through all the shit that i'm posting uh all the stuff that i'm posting on instagram on youtube as the podcast you know i th i also like the word content creator youtuber as such is something i do not like just just because of the word um but yeah so this one is from david brenner and the TED Talk could have been, or is still, a new weapon in the fight against super bugs. I think I just, yeah, I'm gonna go through one of them. It is just a really, really short one. Brilliant Green, The Surprising History and Science of Plant Intelligence by Stefano uh, Mancuso, I guess. So some books just change the way you look at the world. This book that asks, are plants intelligent, is one of them. From Sugata Mitra, I guess, or Sugata Mitra, or Mitra, whatever, from the TED Talk, Build a School in the Cloud. And yeah, um, this is actually it with the episode. I do hope that you're doing well. I hope everything is good. I hope that you found something valuable in this particular episode. Yeah, follow my Instagram, follow me on all the social media platforms for eight posts a fucking day. But on Tumblr. And Tumblr is basically dead for me, but yeah, you know, I'm using the rest pretty heavily. So yeah, I wish you the best health, wealth, happiness and success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on how you gonna be remembered. And I also just wish that you are going to remind yourself on how you're gonna be remembered. So basically your legacy, you know, uh, which is something you totally have in your control, which is in your hands. Still, something that I really, truly want to point out is that we're not going to make everyone happy. Not everyone's going to like us just by default. Just because we're humans, just because we are this way, I guess. But yeah, with that being said, thank you very much for listening and or watching. And I'll see you the next time.